We sat down with Hall of Fame broadcaster and Central Michigan alum Dick Enberg to look back on his illustrious career. We begin where it started for Dick, on campus here at Central Michigan University. Barnes Hall was built the year I arrived here, 57. I was one of the first students to uh, use that as a dormitory. I worked uh, the uh, milk position in the dormitory food line for 60 cents uh, an hour. That's what attracted me to go to WCEN for a custodial opportunity that paid a dollar an hour. So I'm moving up in the financial ranks by uh, sweeping floors, but they said, hey, you've got a decent voice and uh, wound up hiring me as a disc jockey and later as a sportscaster. Did you want to be a broadcaster or was it when you got that job that you found out, maybe I do like doing this? No, no, I wanted to be the athlete that the announcer talked about. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, a lack of talent prevented me from uh, being a great varsity star here. My friends uh, often said, Enberg, you think you're a good athlete, but you only talk a good game. So it did work out okay. You know, they talk all the time about going to, uh, to uh, advanced education and the doors that it opens. And it, incredible, when I think about all the doors that opened from the time I arrived here on this campus to the time I graduated, it's phenomenal. And uh, for that, uh, I think it's important in my lifetime now to give back and that's why I'm so uh, excited and proud of the fact my name is on uh, the academic center here uh, on campus. It's been a while since you've been back here but to see all of that stuff, to see the bus upstairs, to see the academic center, how does that feel? Well and I'm very proud of the university and you know the saying back in uh, our day of course there's the song Hail to the Chippewas and uh, we just said I'm proud to be a Chippewa and I, I, I indeed have been that uh, uh, my entire life. Um, I've always tried to, if there was a Central Michigan player in a game that I was broadcasting, try to slip in uh, Central Michigan. Um, you know, there's, there's great universities, you know, from Michigan to Harvard to UCLA to Texas to you name the schools. But in my own lifetime, there is no greater school, no, no one greater than Central Michigan. I understand you get to lead the band later today for the football game. What's that moment going to be like for you? Well, I, I, I was able to rehearse. At least I got the downbeat uh, going. And I know that after the anthem, they're going to have the little drum roll, and I'm trying to time it. So, and, and I found out today, and, you know, I know the song. So I, I, I know the rhythm of the, of the song. And the truth is, I'm just following them. Uh, but I'm going to act like I'm leading them. <laughs> they even gave me a baton. I'm going to really feel like a big shot tonight. How much did you from being at Central Michigan, how much did that help you in your broadcasting career to get to where you were eventually able to get to? Well, I think no matter where I'd gone, uh, the answer would be the same. It just happened that Central Michigan was there to embrace me. Um, you know, al alma mater in Latin means nurturing mother, and certainly uh, uh, my beloved uh, alma mater uh, nurtured me, embraced me, and allowed me whatever talents I had to let those grow. My advice to to young people would be, you, you can have a game plan, but don't be so locked into that that you uh, ignore how life comes to you. You know, if you give yourself a chance, there's so many opportunities on a campus. You know, embrace that, let it happen to you. That's what makes you a more interesting person and, and assures you to have a more exciting life. You mentioned how many opportunities are here on campus. You were given so many opportunities and took advantage of them out in the real world, whether it was working for different networks, working for teams, out of everything you did in your career, what one or two things stick out to you most? Well, I, I think that somebody asked me what I want on my gra uh, gravestone, and, uh, and I said, uh, here's what I would like. Never called for interference. I'd like to think that I was there to complement the games, whether they were exciting or boring or unusual or unexpected, but that I didn't interfere with the audience opportunity to enjoy the event and hopefully I enhanced it without getting in the way of the game. Did you have a favorite that you called? What sports stuck out? You love them all? Or? Baseball is the best game. Baseball is by far the most challenging game, the best game uh, because of the, the rhythms of the game. You know, you think about it, every other sport is so fast paced or uh, dominated by the color analyst that um, you, you really do the nuts and bolts of the game and, and time score and recaps and that gets a commercial. But baseball, no matter how bright your, your analyst is, you've got uh, to uh, uh, fill in the gaps. You've been given so many awards throughout your career, but last year you were inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame and you mentioned how much you love that sport. What was that moment like for you? Greatest uh, weekend of my life. Uh, the, uh, all my family was there, my colleagues from the networks were there, my friends were there. Um, 
you know, growing up as a kid, dreaming that I would be, taught myself to bat left-handed because I wanted to be like Ted Williams, uh, that I'd be the right fielder for the Tigers. Uh, and then, to, you know, I called the Angel Games uh, for Gene Autry for 11, 12 years, and then to come back to baseball with the Padres, called the World Series for the network. Um, it was kind of going back to the dreams I had as a 9, 10, 11 year old dreaming that, gee, I'd love to be a baseball. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up. And then to be rubbing shoulders with the greatest players in the history of the game and be included by them and the way they embraced me. I wasn't treated like a second citizen just because I wasn't a ball player. I was an announcer. Uh, Johnny Bench, I wasn't 20 steps into the hotel before Bench came across the room and gave me a big hug and said, Enberg, you're a Hall of Famer. Uh, it was that, that kind of uh, moments that gave you shivers and how it complete, and, you know, it's kind of made my life very complete. You just finished up uh, with Padres baseball as their season ended. What's next for you? Um, we're building a cabin in Idaho. I hope it'll be kind of a, my uh, parental and grandparental legacy. It'll be a place where kids will want to come. There's everything there from golf to all the water sports to a ski mountain. It's, I'm thinking back to being a cousin with my cousins when we went to family reunions that it'll, hopefully it'll be uh, that place. I'm in the process of uh, we're making a, a prospectus for a book on my 10 most memorable moments, which is absolutely daunting. I could do 10 most uh, memorable basketball moments. So how do you edit it down in 60 years, come up with only 10? So we're trying to fudge and make it um, a sub 10 with a big 10, and we'll see how that uh, all works out. And we love to travel. And I mean, it's, uh, as one of my friends said, you've got to think of your 60 years as being in a high rise. And you've been, you're on the 60th floor now. Next year, I'm on the 61st floor. Going to be excited up there. There's going to be a lot of good stuff happening. And I can't wait to get there and just see what presents itself.